Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Spur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week, 10 days for today's Spur video. Day 10 will take us to the 26th of February. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Excel GFS and ECM ensembles. And they run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets us well into March. I shall get to it back for you in a moment, just to say about the first video we say it was 6 a.m. upload, and we've also released the European Outlook, so please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that, please like, share, and subscribe on the video, thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that, right, so we're going to start off in the stratosphere, uh, so this from weatheriscool.com is the confirmation that a major sudden stratospheric warming has now taken place. So um, this is uh, from the uh, Polar Vortex status uh, page. They're saying that the SPV, so uh, stratospheric polar vortex, is currently weaker than the ERA-5 average and is forecast to remain weaker than average, according to the GEFS mean. Not out of 31 members have a stronger vortex than average at the last forecast step. B, this is the critical part, the zonal, uh, the zonal mean zonal wind at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north, is today. GFS analysis, minus 3.9 MS, and so therefore zonal winds are in reverse today. So uh, that tells us that today, uh, Thursday the 16th of February 2023, a major southern stratospheric warming has taken place. This is the reason why temperatures have uh, lifted up significantly at 10 HP over the uh, North Pole. This is from the JMA. We can see that uh, yesterday the temperature rose up to around minus 15, something like that. Um, well above the grey line, which is uh, down here. Temperature should be somewhere around minus 55 at this time of the year. So uh, we've had a very, very significant warming I think that's taking place in the stratosphere over the North Pole in the past few days. Going low down to 30 HPA, warming is occurring there as well. Uh, not to the same level yet, but uh, currently standing at around minus 45 degrees, something like that. Basis two uh, GFS runs look like this. So again, this is a confirmation that the core of the warming is uh, in northwestern parts of Russia, and uh, pushing into the North Pole, lifting the temperature to around minus uh, 15 something like that. The temperature might actually go up a little bit more over the next hour or two and go up to around minus 12. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me, that's really significant uh, level of warming. This having the effect of reverse Timazona wind, so that's why we say a major sudden stratospheric warming can happen, and displacing the stratospheric polar vortex at its roots, which is these blue colours, out into North America, the North Atlantic, and into Europe as well. Now, as we go through uh, into uh, next week, we're going to find another warming trying to get going. So the first one sort of fizzles out, uh, declines, but uh, remains more of an average over the pole. Another warming trying to get going there over Siberia into the extended. This is what happens. So no sign of a, another sun stratospheric warming up to the beginning of March, but we keep a displacement a bit again of the polar vortex, and we keep the temperature significantly above average over the uh, North Pole there in the stratosphere. This is the GFS 6 Z run, again, looking much of much is at the moment, with that warmth from Russia pushing into the uh, North Pole itself. And uh, that sort of eases away into uh, the weekend and the early part of next week. However, we keep the temperature above average over North Pole and we keep a displacement event going into the North Atlantic and into northern parts of Europe as well. It looks like the six are trying to get another warming going there over Siberia, perhaps by the very end of the GFS 6 run. So, again, this from weather is cool. Confirmation that the total wind is in reverse. This blue line here shows the current state of the uh, zone wind. You can see that it's now gone underneath the zero line. There it is. The only important zero line telling us that, yes, the zone of wind <coughs> excuse me, has gone into reverse. And uh, so a major sudden stratospheric wind has taken place. If we have a look at the GEFS, 
We can see that Zero Wind is going to drop further, actually, over the next day or two. They're going to try and pull itself back up again. And then towards the end of uh, uh, February, beginning of March, probably going negative again. Probably going even more negative, actually. Going down to a really low level then, somewhere close to uh, minus 20, perhaps, by the end of February. So these are very, very significant developments, of course, within the uh, North Pole. And we're going to have to wait and see what if any tropospheric response we get uh, to this. Uh, this is from the University of Berlin, based on last night's ECM 12Z run, again confirming that today, uh, to 10 HPA, uh, 16th of um, uh, February, 2023 zone of wind reverses, minus 3.4 MS. And uh, as we go to 240 hours, look at this, it gets us to the 25th of February, then this generated uh, from last night's uh, ECM run, uh, zone of wind reverse, uh, still in reverse then at minus 2.0 MS. It will go slightly positive around day 6, 7. I think it will go negative again around uh, days 9 and 10 as we come to the end of February. Um, a 30 HPA at 240 hours. Weak zone of wind at plus 2.4 MS, but still not reversing zone of wind at uh, 30 HPA, and that's closer to the troubles here, so we keep an eye on that, see whether this warming is successfully propagating down, our reversal zone wing is successfully propagating down from 10 HPA into the troposphere. We shall keep monitoring, but we can say that a major sudden stratospheric warming has now uh, taken place today on the 16th of February. So uh, we predicted that this winter would have a uh, major sudden stratospheric warming. I thought it probably would happen a little bit earlier than this. It's been teasing us all winter, but there we go. Has now happened, and uh, that is another element of uh, the gas weather this winter 2022 2023 forecast that has verified. I am you know, really quite pleased with the way winter forecast has gone uh, this year. Not got everything right, you never do with a long range forecast, but I think we've got, got it more right than wrong. And uh, I'm very, very pleased with how the uh, winter forecast has gone. Maybe, maybe a little bit of redemption <laughs> for, uh, for 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 Gav after the 2021-2022 winter forecast. Anyway, we'll talk about that when we get into the beginning of March. But um, yeah, you know, uh, very significant developments. Now we're going to have to start thinking about a tropospheric response. So if we're going to get uh, a tropospheric response to this uh, major sudden stratospheric warming um, via northern blocking. The, one of the first signs of that will be the Arctic Oscillation uh, going from positive to ne negative. So uh, this is how the AO observed and forecast index chart is looking. So the black line shows where we've been with the with the Arctic Oscillation where we currently are. Red lines at the end where GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Currently, we're very positive with the AO, which just there. We have been pretty positive since about the third week of January. Uh, a lot of the time, in the early part of winter, the AO was negative, especially in the first half of December to Christmas. Um, that's when we had all the cold weather, uh, of course. But even after that, generally quite negative with the uh, AO until we get into second half January and then we go positive. So the current position with the Arctic Oscillation is positive. The GFS ensembles are forecasting that the AO will stay positive through to the beginning of March. However, we do see some of the ensemble members right at the very end beginning to drop downwards, um, beginning to drop into negative tension. At the moment, they're a minority. <clears throat> Although it is enough to uh, move the black dash line downwards, so if that's the ensemble mean, it's enough to start moving that back closer to a uh, neutral AO condition. So we wait and see. You know, that's inconclusive. Um, in the next week, 10 days, the AO will be saying uh, very positive. Beyond that, as we get into March, perhaps we will see the Arctic Oscillation starting to move. We will be keeping an eye on the AO, because that will be one of the first signs of a response to, a tropospheric response to the stratospheric warming. First, the NAO of certain forecasts is conserved. This is how it's looking. So for most of this winter, the NAO has been in positive territory, though we did go negative through the first half of December when we had that very cold first half to, to December. But since about Christmas, the NEO has been in positive condition as well as the uh, AO. Currently, we're positive with the NEO. We're going to stay positive for the next week or so with the NEO as well. 
possibly signs that the uh, uh, that the area then starts moving back towards neutral by the beginning of March. Again, it's a long way off, you know, uh, that. So it's in the extended part of the GFS Ensemble. It's very late, it's actually just updated in the very extended part of the uh, GFS Ensemble's quite a bit of scatter. But there's a bit of, a, bit, a, bit of a hint there, isn't there? But by the beginning of March, we might be starting to see uh, both the AEO and the AO on the moon. That could be the first indications of a tropospheric response to the stratospheric one. But I would expect that to be a little bit more further on than that, probably into the second or third week of March. But uh, we'll keep monitoring anyway. The AO and the AEO will be important to keep an eye on over the uh, next few days and weeks. Uh, Central temperature is currently sitting at 5.7, which is 1.9 degrees, only 2 degrees above average. That's provisional to the uh, 15th of February. Certainly a very, very mild first half of February, to say the least. And uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble will show that it's going to stay mild for the next week anyway. So red line is the third year upper air temperature average for Blackburn. Uh, and uh, you can see that we're well above average at the moment. It's going to stay above average um, well into next week. However, there is a drop in the upper air temperature taking place uh, around the middle to second half of next week. It looks like we could get a little bit of a cold snap coming through then. I don't think that's anything to do with the stratospheric warming. I think that just, you know, random part of the weather. I think that's a little bit too early to um, be much to do with the stratospheric warming. Beyond that, we find the upper air temperature lifting back up as we get to the very end of February and into the beginning of March. Though that could be anticyclonic, so not necessarily realising that lift up in the temperature on the surface if we're under a cold area of high pressure following this cold snap. Precipitation-wise, going to be rather showery over the uh, next week across the northern half of the country, so there will be showers coming and going. Uh, initially rain, but as it turns colder later next week, some of that might turn wintry. And then right at the end of February, into the beginning of March, it looks relatively dry. Having a quick look at snow row, we see quite a few uh, snow spikes there for uh, Blackburn um, through the second half of next week, inside around 22nd, 24th of February. So, you know, that might deliver a little bit of snow, that cold snap. Um, for a couple of days later next week, if we go to somewhere like Birmingham, not as many snow spikes there, but there's a few, you know, it looks like that's most we've seen anyway in February, so it looks like we might get a little bit of snow um, later next week. Temperature anomaly is on the 16th, 24th February, going to be milder than average. Precipitation anomaly is on the 16th, 24th February, going to be dry anomaly in the south. A little bit wet to the north, though, up in the north. Latest wind from that from Earth, North School. Next shows up joining in wind from off the Atlantic today. So the weather remains relatively mild. This is how the UK at Euro run is looking for midnight on Sunday. So um, we're bringing a trough through the country. Another air low pressure in northern Scotland as we go through Monday will bring wet wind, but also mild weather into the northern half of the country in particular. And then by the middle of next week, that high pressure starts to pull out into the Atlantic. That allows some colder air to dig in from the northwest. And winds will turn into the north by uh, midnight on Thursday. We've got low pressure in the North Sea, high pressure reaching through the Atlantic up towards Greenland. And so that is our colder second half to next week. And this low might deliver some rain, but also some sleet and snow especially to the door for the middle part of next week. Icon looks like that. So, uh, again, red of mild over the weekend. Into the part of next week, the high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic. We bring in a cooler northwesterly, but not as much of a northerly influence with Icon compared to the UK. Met more of an Atlantic, you know, west-northwesterly, so that won't be as cold. Probably still cold enough to bring some wintry showers into the north, though. GFS midnight run, uh, once more, looking like this with high pressure pulling out to uh, west into the middle of next week. Low pressure diving into the North Sea. Turns the wind into the North. That's a definite cold snap. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Next week, a little bit of northeasterly tilt to that wind. Could bring some snow showers even into the southeastern part of the country. And then over the final weekend of February, that high pressure reaches in through the country. Just within cold air. So although we cut off the northerly supply, and um, the sun is getting quite strong at the end of February, so by day, probably feeling relatively pleasant. But it would deliver overnight frost and fog, particularly so in the northern half of the country. Maybe quite significant 
frost at that. That's day 10, which is the 26th of February. Beyond that, the high pressure sticks around the country. And this is a cold week, so probably keeps the frost, overnight frosty nights going into the beginning of uh, March. And then, right at the very, very end, Saturday 4th of March, size at high pressure beginning to push northwards up towards Greenland. Maybe a hint of a northerly blast coming. Um, that could be uh, a, a response to the strap warning. Um, that could be the first indication of it. But remember, that's only two weeks away, so that is a huge time out. But that would be the kind of time frame, a little bit further on than that even, probably into the second week of March, but it's the kind of time frame that we're thinking about, you know, but, but we might start seeing a tropospheric response. Right, GFS 6 then. Uh, looks like this. So once more, we bring in some cooler... Uh, or colder northwest winds through the middle part of next week. We turn wind into the north by Thursday. That brings snow showers into northern and uh, eastern areas in particular. And the high pressure ridging in across the country by the end of next week. That would be a cold ridge and it will produce uh, really quite harsh overnight frost. That ridge then sticks around into the uh, final weekend of the month. Beyond day 10, High pressure just remains dominant, really, right way into the beginning of March, and not much sign that the high pressure going northwards up to the 4th of March on this particular GFS run. If you're enjoying the video, it's all rather fascinating, isn't it? Whatever comes of this sort of stratospheric warming, um, it's, been, it's been interesting, hasn't it, watching it develop. And I thought being frustrating as well, of course, been toyed and played with this uh, since around Christmas. And even before that, with our forecast with the winter of 2000 until 2023, when we predicted there'd be an SSW uh, this winter, it took right to virtually the end of the winter. But, you know, it's been interesting watching it unfold, hasn't it? So if you've enjoyed not only this video, but the journey to this sudden stratosphere warming, then please can you uh, like, share and subscribe on the video. Don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Remember where you heard first that uh, we will get an SSW uh, this winter back at the beginning of December. Right, GM, again, with high pressure to our south, low pressure to the north through the early part of next week, and the high pressure falls out into the Atlantic winds term into the northwest around the middle part of next week. Then wind goes northerly into the second half of next week. That will bring colder air and the risk of some wintry showers into northern and eastern areas in particular. Up to day 10, we remain quite cold under this ridge of high pressure just off the northerly, and there won't be any snow around, but it will still be quite cold up to day 10 with that, with uh, some of the gruesome twosome. <laughs> and then we've got the ECMWF, which looks like this. So again, got high pressure, south, low pressure, to the north, bringing in a mild west or southwesterly wind through the open next week. And the high pressure pulls out to our west, start to drop this low pressure in from the north by the second half of next week. Turns colder, not as much of a northerly with the ECM. It's just the way that's dropping in this trough of low pressure. So, you know, I would suspect that trough of low will probably be more in the North Sea in the end. But we should wait and see. It will be turning colder on that scenario uh, anyway through the second half of next week. And uh, that's how long as we get to day 10. So trying to bring some milder air back in from off the Atlantic. But actually up to that point, we're still cold with overnight frost and fog, particularly in the south of the east. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So uh, we're going to be in for some uh, pretty interesting weather over the uh, next year. We've got Storm Otto coming uh, tonight and tomorrow. There it is, just up to the north of Scott. That brings some very wild weather uh, tonight and tomorrow morning into the northern half of the country via Storm Otto. I'm uh, going to go into the weekend. Actually, we could bring some snow into Scotland with this next area of low pressure. So rain, sleet and snow through the northern half of the country as we go into uh, Friday night and Saturday morning, leaving us mate, with a, a drier day for Sunday. And then into next week, that's when we start bringing that low pressure southwards. So uh, the precipitation begins to turn more wintry, wintry showers there um, into the middle and second half of next week. I've got it turns main dry by day 10. This is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. From the Icelandic Met Office gets us to the 26th of February 51. Out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them at day 10 have some high pressure to the north and some low pressure to the south. So uh, mainly dry, but probably quite cold uh, with that. 
And then in trimming time, this is the option that we've got. It gets us to the 3rd of March. High pressure still in control, sitting just to the north, northeast of Scotland. So again, main driver, probably quite chilly. Overnight, frost would be expected with that. By day, it's early March, so by day, you know, with the March sunshine, we could lift the temperature still into the uh, into double digits, given the strength of the sun. But by night, it would be cold with significant overnight frost. We're going to wait to see beyond that whether we get that high pressure any further northwards. Will we get that high pressure northwards as we go further on into March? CFS B2, finally, these are 500 millibar high dollars breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 16th to 22nd of February. The coming week will have high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. So looking relatively uh, mild and uh, also relatively dry in the week here. Changes for week two is the 23rd of February to the 1st of March. The high pressure goes north, resides somewhere between Iceland and Norway, low pressure through France, Spain, and uh, to our south. And so that would bring the wind in from the east. That would turn colder, of course, as we get into the closing days of February. Week three <laughs> is going to be the second to the eighth of March. High pressure went somewhere around Iceland. Beginning to move northwards, though. Um, well, that could be bringing in like an east or northeasterly flow, probably dry and cold. And then week four looks quite interesting. This is going to be the night of the 15th of March. High pressure is in the North Atlantic, heading up towards Greenland. Trough of low pressure dropping in across northern Europe. Winds will be going into the north and the northeast. That looks cold, doesn't it? Looks like that could well turn cold as we go uh, further on into the second week of March. That could well be uh, the CFS indicating a tropospheric response to the uh, stratospheric warming. We shall see. Interesting, 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 isn't it? Uh, if you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos. I mean, thank you so very, very much for doing this. We need to put on around 70 subscribers. That's all. 7-0 to get ourselves to 15.6K. Uh, so if you could give us a sub. Tell friends and family to subscribe. Tell your friends where you heard about the uh, major sudden stratospheric warming this winter first, right way back at the beginning of December. You know, uh, spread the word about Gareth's World Vids. We thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Right, now, tomorrow, I'm off to the dentist. And uh, I think, I'm not sure what we're doing with the tube, actually. So, <laughs> give me a case and watch this space. I will get Jeremy Friday done before I go. And, of course, I'll be at 6 a.m. upload after that. What happens in the afternoon... Um, will depend on what happens at the dentist. So, uh, if the tooth is pulled, um, then uh, I may not... I may be a bit fragile uh, tomorrow afternoon. And, uh, you know, I might not feel like doing a day at all, day uh, or doing a Friday night live stream. But I'll keep everybody updated anyway. And, uh, you know, keep an eye on the social media pages and the community page. And uh, I'll let you all know. Uh, what's happening as tomorrow progresses. But in any case, for today's videos, uh, that's all for now. And thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and bye for now.